Number 10, Robert Champion. Florida A&M University is home to one of the best marching bands in the US, and Robert Champion was set to have a bright future within the ensemble. That is, until a brutal hazing ritual put an end to his life. To earn the respect of his bandmates, Champion decided to cross bus C. The ritual involved crossing a bus aisle while his bandmates beat him. Champion fell halfway through but was subsequently dragged to the front of the bus. He made another run at it, but this time ended up on one of the seats. One band member gripped the back of the seat and repeatedly jumped up and down on Champion as others prevented him from getting up. Champion eventually stopped breathing and passed out. He died en route to the hospital and his autopsy showed contusions all over his chest, back, arms and shoulders, as well as extensive bleeding in his tissues. Number 9. Chad Meredith In 2001, 18-year-old Chad Meredith was attending the University of Miami with hopes of playing professional basketball. As a pledge for the Kappa Sigma fraternity, he participated in dangerous hazing that would ultimately cost him his life. After drinking until his blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit, he was told to jump into a nearby lake. Some of his fraternity brothers joined him, only that they swam further out. Meredith tried to keep up, but he was too cold, tired and intoxicated to go any further. When he couldn't swim anymore, he called for help, but no one returned for him. The police found his lifeless body hours later. A lengthy lawsuit followed the incident. It would lead to the signing of the Chad Meredith Act in the state of Florida. It stated that hazing could be considered a felony offense instead of only carrying misdemeanor charges. In 2006, Meredith's family was awarded $14 million by a jury, one of the most substantial hazing settlements ever granted. Number 8. Richard Swanson In September 1959, Kappa Sigma pledges at the University of Southern California underwent the typical hazing humiliation with one disgusting addition. Each of them had to swallow quarter pound pieces of raw liver which had been soaked in oil. Additionally, they had to do so without chewing. Richard Swanson, one of the pledges, started choking after the meat got lodged in his throat. The police and emergency services arrived on scene, but the fraternity members didn't tell them what had happened. Instead, they claimed that Swanson's respiratory distress had been caused by a nervous spasm. Two hours later, Swanson was pronounced dead. The 1977 film Fraternity Row was inspired by the incident. Number 7. Sean Davis the 23-year-old had been an employee at Republic Energy Drilling Company around a week when veteran workers tried to initiate him. They attached a belt to his body and even though Davis struggled, they hoisted him up via a cable that was used to pick up pipe. Davis was hooked to the cat line. What they didn't notice was that the device used for drilling holes in the ground, which rotates at 70 spins per minute, was turning at the time. As the cat line sagged from Davis's weight, it got caught in the device. Davis was dragged face first out of the building. He hit a metal door so hard that it was taken off its hinges. He was then spun 10 to 20 times around the drilling device, hitting various surfaces and pieces of equipment. Everything was shut down, but by that time, Davis had already died of blunt force trauma. Number 6. Matthew Carrington While attending Chico University, Matthew Carrington wanted to join the Chi Tao fraternity. Its initiation rituals pushed the pledges so hard that it was referred to as going through hell week. In the frat house basement which was flooded with raw sewage, Carrington was forced to do various physical exercises while answering questions about the fraternity. Whenever he got an answer wrong, he had to drink water from a five-gallon jug. After drinking a dangerous amount of water, Carrington was put in a sleeping bag. Later, when the others opened the bag, they saw that Carrington had stopped breathing. He died before the emergency services arrived on scene. It was determined that he died from hyponatremia, a condition also known as water intoxication. 
The sodium imbalance generated by the excessive water intake had caused Carrington's cells to swell. His passing caused the state of California to pass Matt's law in 2006, which allows for felony charges for certain hazing rituals previously classed as misdemeanors. Number 5. William Flowers in November 1974, William Flowers was about to become the first Afro-American member of the Zeta Beta Tau fraternity at Monmouth College in New Jersey. However, before that could happen, he had to go through a hazing ritual. Along with five other pledges, he was told to meet senior members at a beachfront area. The pledges were then told to dig graves in the sand. Afterwards, they were ordered to lie in the graves as the frat members watched them from the ground above. Suddenly, the walls from Flowers' five-foot-deep hole collapsed and he was buried under several hundred pounds of sand. Fifteen minutes passed until Flowers was dug out, but by then it was too late. In his memory, an anti-hazing statue was erected in New York. Number 4. Kenny Luong Getting through the Lambda Phi Epsilon hazing rituals was no easy feat, but Kenny Luong was determined to see it through. After over 10 weeks of strenuous physical activities that involved pledges carrying each other on their shoulders while kneeling on bricks and performing closed-fisted push-ups on gravel, it was time for the final trial. The 10 pledges, without wearing any protective gear, took part in a football game against 40 frat members. Over the span of three hours, the game became increasingly more dangerous. At one point, Luong was sent to the ground by a hard tackle and he didn't get up. Only when he began convulsing did people realize something had gone horribly wrong. Luong was taken to the hospital. His brain swelling was so severe, the doctors had to drill holes in his skull to try and relieve the pressure. Unfortunately, the extent of brain damage was too great and Luong was pronounced dead. Number 3. William James On March 8, 2004, William James took part in an initiation ceremony for an unsanctioned club attached to a Masonic Lodge in Patchog, New York. All the members in attendance were Masons. James was told to sit in a chair as cans were placed on a platform around his head. One of the members sat about 20 feet away with a gun in his hand. The idea was that the gun would be loaded with blanks. To make James think everything was real, as the shooter fired, a second member was supposed to knock over the cans. Unfortunately, alleged shooter Albert Ead was holding two guns, one of which had real bullets in it. He accidentally fired that one, fatally wounding James. Number 2. Michael Davis in 1994, while pledging for Kappa Alpha Psi at Southeast Missouri State University, Davis went through an extremely brutal hazing ritual. For long periods of time, Davis was repeatedly punched and kicked by members of the fraternity. After the savage beating, the 25-year-old was almost unconscious. The frat members then took him to his student apartment instead of the emergency room. Davis died in his room from brain hemorrhage. He had sustained bruises all over his neck, chest, back and arms. His kidney and liver were lacerated and he'd suffered broken ribs. Nobody knows why Davis, who wasn't a big guy, was beaten so severely. The fraternity was expelled from the chapter and seven of its members served short jail sentences. Number 1. Sotus SOTUS, which stands for seniority, order, tradition, unity, and spirit, is a code among university campuses in Thailand that has become synonymous with hazing. It reportedly originated in the late 1940s when teachers from Oregon University and Cornell University decided to bring hazing rituals to Thailand. Yet, according to many students, the initiation rituals locally known as Rub Nong have become almost akin to torture. It has gotten so bad that it gave rise to various anti-SOTUS groups and Facebook pages with thousands of followers. One of these pages posted around 40 pictures from Ram Kam Hang University in Bangkok. 
The images show a student group called Ram Lang Swan and its freshman initiation rituals, which some have described as abuse. The freshmen are covered in dirt, stepped on, and ordered to engage in humiliating activities. They're constantly being shouted at or beaten. Similar to military training, they have to crawl, do push-ups, sit-ups, and other strenuous exercises for hours on end. The idea is that the freshmen have to do what the seniors tell them without hesitation, and sometimes this can have lethal consequences. In the last 10 years, Thailand has reported five deaths from hazing. A freshman was burned alive in 2007 after being told to roll in a bonfire, and in 2012, a student died from injuries sustained after being hit by seniors. 19-year-old student Chok Chai Thong Na Kao was unconscious in the hospital for three days after he was ordered to swim across a university campus pond.